Hello and welcome to Bite Size Tech. I'm your host, Rogue, and today a word from our sponsor, Crypto.com, home of the Visa card that pays up to 8% in rewards and the app that pays you up to 14% annually on your crypto stake. Join more than 10 million users on the world's fastest growing crypto app as you trade with confidence on the world's fastest and most secure crypto exchange. Tech has more information and a special sign up offer at the end of this video. Johnny number five comes in with an awesome question about CPU upgrades. And it is, he's running the 9900K with a 3080 and at 1440p, but he feels like his CPU is holding back that 3080. And he wants to know when is the uh, motherboard swap and CPU upgrade worth it in our opinion? Well, this is actually a great question. And I suspect way too many people will either roll their eyes or prejudge it, or they will have already gone to the comment section to leave a comment without listening to what I have to say. Oh, you mean without watching the video? No, that never happens. That happens way too often. So don't be that person. I award zero gold stars to anybody who leaves a comment before they watch the video. Now, first of all, let me get a point out right up front. The i9-9900K is an awesome CPU. I have benchmarked it endlessly on our channel. I have tested it with like every graphics card you can imagine. I have an i9-9900K at home. I have a ton of experience with that CPU. And it's interesting you asked the question because about a year ago, I upgraded from its predecessor, the i7-8700K. Now, for those of you who maybe have forgotten or weren't paying attention at the time, it happens, I understand. The i7-8700K was, at the time, the top-end consumer chip from Intel, 6-core, 12-thread, roughly equivalent to a Ryzen 5 3600X, if it's not overclocked and a little bit better if it is. 4.3 gigahertz all-core, but it would run at 5 gigahertz if you wanted it to, with sufficient cooling. The i9-9900K is an 8-core, 16-thread chip with a 4.7 gigahertz out-of-the-box all-core turbo. MCE easily does 5 gigahertz with a reasonably decent cooler. The current debate among gamers that I see is 6 cores or 8 cores. 12 or 16 seems to be relegated mostly to content creators, heavy multitaskers, live streamers who want to use one computer and whatnot. Most people online go to Reddit, go to Twitter, go to Discords. They all seem to think, well, do you get a six core or do you get an eight core? Most people agree that four cores are now relegated to basic entry level stuff or older machines. Those certainly are yesterday's news. Here's the funny thing. He's not crazy to ask this question. And I'm sure plenty of people say, what? 9900K? How dare you even think of upgrading it? That is outrageous. An i9-9900, yes, I'll get to the point. An i9-9900K is better than a lot of our viewers have. It is. It is a better CPU. There's a ton of people watching who have an FX8300 or a Ryzen 5 1600 or maybe a Ryzen 7 2700. Mm -hmm. A 9900K is better than all of those in every respect. Faster per core, more cores, everything. Higher clock speed, etc. He has a 3080 and he's running at 1080p. No, there, 1440. I'm sorry, thank you. I was thinking as opposed to 4K, but you're right. He's running at 1440p. There will be situations, not many, but they do exist, where even at 1440p, he will be CPU bottlenecked. But it's rare. I have a 9900K at home and I am actually looking at replacing that with a Ryzen 9 5950X, 16 core, 32 thread chip. But wait, Tech, I can already hear you go into the comment section. You're a content creator. You make 4K YouTube videos. Well, of course you want a faster machine. I have a 24 core Threadripper. I I've got an 18 core Cascade Lake X. My work machines are high-end desktop professional machines with all very nice stuff in them, 128 gigs of RAM in the works. This is my personal gaming machine at home. I don't make videos on it. I find eight cores is very much starting to become a limitation. And the game that shows that limitation the most is... Cyberpunk. Uh, Cyberpunk. But you also multitask more than the average person too. So between 
multitasking and playing a game is kind of like... Cyberpunk runs fine on a 9900K if that's all you're doing. Either a single monitor situation or if you have two monitors, you minimize and close whatever's on the other monitor and you just play your game. And that's fine. And if you do that, I do that, it works pretty well. In older games, I could certainly have my other monitor watching a Twitch stream, watching a YouTube video. I could be occasionally chatting in Discord or chatting on a forum or chatting on Twitter while I'm doing stuff. In Cyberpunk, if I have the web browsers open, if I'm doing something while I'm playing, the difference in frame stutter, the difference in smoothness is absolutely, I don't need benchmarks to tell the difference. It is very clear that the CPU is tasked to capacity. Now, I also have other things running on my machine because I have backups and syncs and I have a lot of files and a lot of storage and whatnot. And it's, it definitely is, shall we say, an above average tasked machine. It is not my work machine. No, so his question is what is next after I'm getting that? there. This is the, the, the tech version of the answer. It's the long version. It is the long version. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's get into it. So most people watching me right now, if you have an i9 9900K and an RTX 3080, I would not advise you upgrade. It is a great CPU, it's a great GPU. You already have it, it's already working, enjoy it. You do not wanna to touch it until Alder Lake comes out this fall on LGA 1700. We're about to get a whole new socket with a new chipset, a new everything with Big Little, and Intel will be going to 16 cores and 24 threads on the desktop. And then early next year in 2022, Zen 5 is launching, five nanometer, new socket with the Zen, uh, did I say Zen 5? AM5 AM5 with Zen 4. Zen 4. My apologies. There's so many numbers and it's, if, if, I, if my brain can get tangled thinking, okay, AM5, Zen 4, DDR5, PCI, PCI Express 4. 4, how does the average person who doesn't do this for a living keep any of that straight? And then there's going to be DDR4 and DDR5 in there as well. Alder Lake is going to support both. Oh, and Alder Lake on the Intel side will support PCI Express Gen 5, but not for the M.2 slots. So yeah, um, it, it's going to be interesting, folks. I would keep a 9900K for another year or two. It really is fine. The only people who should actually consider replacing it right now. Now, he did not give us enough information for me to give every pop. I'll say this. If you are a Twitch live streamer and you are streaming on the same PC you're gaming on and you have two monitors and you have OBS up and you have your chat window up and you have your other various programs you use while you're streaming, you know what? A Ryzen 9 5950X is not ridiculous if you're playing games like Cyberpunk. Now, if you're Twitch streaming and you're playing Overwatch or Siege, 9900K is perfect because they're less demanding. They're Correct. older games. Correct. So it does depend on the games. It depends on your task. Of course, if you're content creating, video editing, etc., yes, it's an upgrade makes sense. Here's a fun thought. Do you realize the i9 9900K came out three years ago. I, I remember when it came out. 2018. Well, October of 20. It's not quite been three years, but we're close. So when Alder Lake comes out this year with 16 cores. It'll be three years. It'll be three years from Intel's first eight core chip. We had almost 10 years of four core chips from Intel. Four core, four core, four and core. Literally we, four cores. And now we did three years for eight cores. To 16. To 16. Intel's first consumer level eight core chip was three but years ago. it's not ago. really 16. It's really still eight. You know what? It's still eight. But next year, third quarter 2022, 24 cores on Raptor Lake. Yes. There's a reason why there's 1,700 pins on LGA 1,700. They need room for extra stuff. Correct. So that's going to be interesting. Versus AMD's 32. We'll see. Yes. We'll see. Maybe. Who knows? I think they'll do 24 out the gate and then leapfrog. They want, they'll they want to leave themselves something to go to. Exactly. I could be wrong. We'll see. Hopefully that helps you. It requires that much explanation because the answer is always it depends. It does. Most people shouldn't replace it. It'll be a whole new computer 
when it's It's time. a new motherboard. It's a new chip. It's a big freaking deal. And two brand new platforms from both Intel and, and AMD are coming out. And we don't have the information out. to know which one to go to until they get here. See, if he asked this question with an i7-8700K six-core chip and he had a 3080, I would give a different answer. Exactly. I would say upgrade. But since he already has a great eight core chip. There's nowhere really to go unless it's a whole brand new system with stuff that isn't even here yet. Or if he goes to a Ryzen 9 5950X, yes, he gets 16 cores, but it's yesterday's platform that's about to be replaced. Correct. Now I'm going to do it because we have a tech YouTube channel and we need to make content for YouTube. I do things sometimes and make choices with my stuff that I don't necessarily recommend you guys do because we're constantly cycling hardware to use everything. That doesn't mean you should go out and spend your money doing it. I'm doing it for work. I do think that point is important to include. Very important. Hopefully that helps you. How many of you have a Visa card that pays you up to 8% on every purchase? Crypto.com offers an amazing deal on their Visa card with cashback that is an unbeatable deal. No annual fee, no sign-up fee, no credit checks, no interest payments. It works just like a prepaid debit card, allowing you to spend your money anywhere Visa is accepted. But wait, there's more. Get your Spotify, Netflix, and Amazon Prime subscriptions 100% paid for by Crypto.com. You heard me right. Use your new Crypto Visa card to pay for your subscriptions and get 100% back in rewards. Earning 8% on your new Visa card is awesome, but how would you like to earn up to 14% interest on your crypto holdings? If you're holding crypto for investment, inflation protection, or price speculation, it can be frustrating to feel like your money is just parked. Yes, you really can earn up to 14% annual interest on your crypto paid weekly directly to your account to spend however you like. The interest is paid in the same token that you're holding. So if you have Bitcoin staked, you are in Bitcoin. If you have Ethereum staked, you are in Ethereum, and so on. Flexible terms are offered, including zero lock, so you can withdraw your crypto anytime you like without restrictions, or you can hold for one or three month terms for a higher rate of return. Of course, you can buy, sell, and exchange 100 plus cryptocurrencies with 20 plus fiat currencies using bank transfers or your credit and debit card at true cost. Crypto.com is first and foremost a crypto exchange. There is so much more to explore, I have barely scratched the surface. DeFi features including a private wallet with full control of your private keys, margin and derivatives trading options for advanced traders, crypto credit allows you to borrow against your holdings with no deadlines or credit checks, crypto NFTs allows you to explore the new world of non-fungible tokens, crypto pay allows you to pay any merchant with crypto and you earn up to 10% back in rewards, and that's not even everything they have to offer. If you're looking for the place to be in crypto, use our link in the video description below to sign up today, you'll get a $25 crypto sign up bonus and 30 days of 0% transaction fees on credit and debit card purchases of crypto. It supports the channel and it gets you a great offer to get started in the world of crypto.